Good morning. Welcome to Grace for today. Blessings to each of you. God bless you. Hmm. My prayers of the Lord will bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. We are grateful for all that the Lord has done and all that he is doing. God remains the faithful God. He is the faithful God. Yes, he is. He is faithful. We're going to give you all a few moments to come on and we're going to get started for our teaching for today. And happy November 1st. We are moving forward into the end of this year knowing that God is going to do what he promised in his word. And I know that you're expecting just like I'm expecting. What is that little song? We're expecting great things. We're expecting great things. Um, give me just a moment. I'm sure I did something that I can't seem to find. And um, But we are thankful for all that he is doing. And I'm just grateful for you. And let's see if we can find up. Oh, some of y'all are already on. Therefore, it helps me to find myself. Praise the Lord. All right. Yes. Okay. So now, let's see if I can um, join you. I'd like to. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't want to join quite that far. But okay. It's another day's journey. And we're glad. We're just glad about it. <clears throat> so God bless everybody. We're going to get started with our teaching for today. And uh, good morning. You have been away a long time, Sam Travis. But blessings and it's good to see you. Hope you're well. Praying your strength. All right. Good morning, everybody. All right. Well, Deborah, we're going to believe. This is Missionary Reed, Giles. We're going to pray that today you're going to be able to do it. All right. Praise God. God bless everybody. I know that um, sometimes we have challenges, we have things going on, but I know that God remains faithful in the midst of it. And may he give us all grace to accomplish what we should. Oh, let's fix this. All right. Let's get started, everybody. Woo! Bless God. Hallelujah. Let's pick up at, uh, pick up at uh, Exodus chapter 8, verse 13. And remember, our theme still is the distinction. And Egypt will know. Well, I'm going to stay from out, outside. I'm going to stay inside as long as I can. I'm sure I'll go out sometime, but especially service tonight. But uh, thank you all for sharing as soon as you come on. And uh, But yeah, it's cold outside in Mississippi. But it's a brief little cold spell, I'm hoping. But whatever it is, we're grateful for it. Um Let's look at verse 13. We're going to pick up right there, but um, we're going to move forward. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages. The place began to smell because of all the dead frogs. We know that scripture. We've talked about that. And when Pharaoh saw that the frogs were gone, he changed his mind again. God was not surprised. And I want you to remember that. And, and sometimes we forget because of what we're going through. What we're going through seems to loom large in our minds. And we forget what we're going through is, is not a surprise to God. He already knew, which means he already prepared you for it. You may feel surprised, but some things are a challenge or a test to our faith to see where we are. Sometimes we forget that God is trying to grow us up, to grow us up, to grow us up. We need to grow up. And growth only happens sometimes through challenges, through pain, but many times it happens through the things we encounter. We grow through the things we encounter. You don't know that you're mature until you encounter something and you don't respond the same way. You don't respond the same way. All right. Here. Let's look at this one. We saw that in verse 16. The Lord didn't tell Aaron and Moses 
before he did the third plague. He didn't tell them to go to Pharaoh and ask him or to ask him to let the people go again. He just said, smite the dust create the, and that will create the lice. He just told them what to do. Then they went to Pharaoh. Look, he says, and the Lord said to Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch out your rod, smite the dust of the land that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, smote the dust of the earth. Good morning. Hey, Masika, calm down. I see it real calm, real calm. And it became lice in man and in beast and all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Listen, I'm glad we were not during that, that, that time. I cannot imagine lice everywhere. But here's the thing. Verse 18. They thought they could do the same thing again. The magicians of Egypt. I'm telling you, every time I hear the magicians of Egypt, I think of the real housewives of whatever. Because it just sounds, the magicians of Egypt. Like they're this grand group. The magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth the lice. They tried to do what they had done before and they could not. But they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Everybody. Now, if they were living in America, the first thing they would do would say, what kind of God is this that would put lice upon these children? The babies didn't do nothing. These babies got lice all over them. We, we, we didn't do anything and there's lice on all these children. These babies are crying and screaming. The baby, the lice everywhere. You know this is not the God of love. No, this is the God of judgment. We act like, and I keep telling you, we need to stop looking for the God that the world has created in our minds. Read the Bible to see who God is. Saints, read the Bible to see who God is. Stop trying to defend the figment of somebody's imagination. You know, when people go, hey, Demarcus McGee, we've missed you too. When we, when we go to, I was listening a little bit to Bishop Sheard's a video last night with uh, Dr. Uh, Bishop Hankerson, and he was talking about premarital counseling. When they go, he tells them to take two days apart and write out what they're expecting from their 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 uh, their their, their soon-to-be spouse. And sometimes, what we are expecting is unrealistic. The person can't provide that. Sometimes we develop in our minds an idea of what God, who God is. He's not that. God is not a sugar daddy. He's not Santa Claus. What we developed, we get to do anything we want and God just says, here it is, here it is, here it is. And you do it. That's not the God we serve. And uh, this idea in, in Western culture that God is love and that's all he is. They don't know much about the God of the Bible. They just don't know him. He's a God who says, be ye holy, because I am holy. That's the God we serve. The God we serve is the one that says, come out from among them and be holy. He said, you're going to be my people and I'll be your God. He said, sanctify yourselves. He's the one who says, um, uh, uh, I put my word in your heart. That's who he is. He's that one. He's the one that said, you shall have no other God before me, in place of me, above me. Seek the Lord. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things, things, things will be added to you. We've chosen to put the things first, then God. Listen, we need to know who the God of the Bible is. He loves everybody, but he hates sin. We love sin and then we hate God. We, we need to know who God is. Let me, I'm sorry. I got off. I got off. I'm sorry. But the magicians, 
understood. They understood finally. Um, and they told Pharaoh in verse 19, this is the finger of God. Oh, help us to catch a clue. Help us to catch a clue. When God is moving, help us to know. Um, you might not be pleased with what he is doing, but it don't mean it ain't God. Sometimes God will challenge you. I was listening to Dr. Cindy Trim and she had a thousand dollars and a little change in the bank. And God told her, the man of God, she was at a church. She had just moved to the States and God said, and the man was asking for a thousand dollars. And they said, lock the door because there's another thousand dollars in here. And I know some of y'all were saying, oh, now that don't sound like God. She said that the Lord, she said she heard. She knew how to hear God. She heard a, a voice say, you need to give that thousand dollars. And she rebuked the devil and began to speak in tongues, praying that whoever it was would give it so she could go home. And the Lord spoke to her and said, that ain't the devil. That's me. Give that thousand dollars. And she was like, but Lord, that's, I need, she said, I need my money. He said, you don't need money. You need favor. She obeyed, that thousand dollars turned into millions. And the thing that God gave her produced and made her the first millionaire in her family. Listen, what we need to understand is everything isn't the devil when it doesn't make sense to us. We just need to learn to obey God. We need to know when it's God, even if it doesn't make sense to us. The, the, I wanted to read this to you from my mama's Bible. I wanted to read it to you. Look, let me read it to you, okay? He, they said, um, then the magicians tried to do the same thing with their secret arts. But this time, this time, Oh, I got to go. My time is gone. They failed. This is the finger of God, they exclaimed to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh's heart was hard and stubborn, and he wouldn't listen to them, just as the Lord had predicted. You understand this. The thing is this. Pharaoh's hard heart was hardened. When, he, when Moses and Aaron talked to them, now his heart was hardened even when his own magicians, all of their work, all of their little secrets and sorcery was eliminated. They couldn't do anything and they, he wouldn't listen to them either. God will have the last word. When we have exhausted all of our means and pride and arrogance is still there, all we're doing is filling up our cup where God is going to produce something against us. We need to understand God sees and God knows. Good morning. Hey, Sister Annie Pearl. We, we see here, and I'm going to finish this, but I, I need to finish. I can get past this point. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. But it doesn't tell us that they even went to Pharaoh before this. Stand before Pharaoh, lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. Let them go. Let them go. He's still saying the same thing. And Pharaoh still is hard-hearted. Still hard-hearted. Still. And verse 21, I'm going to stop right there. Else if thou wilt not let my people go. They had lice going on. They had lice everywhere. He says, but if you won't let my people go. God is saying back to back. All right, I've already turned the water to blood. I've already sent the frogs. I've already sent, here it is, the third plague. I've already sent lice. He says, all right, you got lice everywhere right now. Lice was on Pharaoh too. 
lice. I'm going to send swarms of flies. And here you're going to, on Picks Up Tomorrow, you're going to see God saying something specific about his people. Join me in the morning. I'm going to stop right there because I got to. But verse 21, I'm going to start right there in the morning. Start right there in the morning. I'm going to start right there in the morning. All right. The fourth plague. God says, listen, it doesn't matter who thinks they're getting the, the upper hand. You better start confessing it, not because you mean evil, but because God's word is true. Nobody's getting away with mistreating God's people. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter how much money they've got. It doesn't matter how big they are. It doesn't matter what government place they sit in. Everything is coming down but the word of God. Do you hear me? What you got to do is stand in a place where God will bless you. That's all there is to that. All right. All right. I'm going to pick up. Start right there at verse 21. Well, we better start at verse 20. Let's start at verse 20 tomorrow. Let me put that in the right spot so we can start at the right place tomorrow. We're going to pick it up right there. We're going to start at that fourth plague because God is still saying the same thing. He's the same God. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I got to go. I've kept y'all longer than I should. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for what you're doing in us. Help us to see and give us confidence toward you that we are not shaken by circumstances or by delays. By circumstances or by delays. And we rebuke the spirit of fear that we will that we cannot do this or that or the other lord we thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper you're our healer you are the strength of our lives you're our hope of glory all we need we find in you because you provided your word says you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature lord it's not just spiritual but you provide what we need in the natural as well you give us divine connections and we trust you for it help us to do more in 2024 and you help us to soar in 2024. Thank you, Father, what, for what you're doing in us, in each of us. Protect your sons and your daughters. Protect your children, our children, as they go about their day. Protect them from evil. We thank you now that your word is working in us. Give us grace. Protect us, those who are going to have procedures today and exams and tests. Give us peace in the name of Jesus. Show us what to do. In Jesus' name we pray. So it is. Amen. Happy November 1st. Happy November 1st. God is faithful. All right. Y'all, don't forget to share the video. We're a little low on sharing, but if everybody watching would just share real quick, it'd be great. We'll be right about where we should be. I really do appreciate y'all sharing. Don't forget about our YouTube channel. We'll upload this to YouTube very shortly. And um, yeah. That's what we're going to do. Join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, thank you so much, Annie Ingram. You just posted something I wanted to share. I wanted to like at least. Yes, it's harvest time. What have you, what seeds have you planted? Man, I'm planting some seeds because I need a harvest. Yes, I am. Planting, planting, planting. Every opportunity I get into good ground now. I ain't planting in no sand. Because sand doesn't produce. All right. Got to go. Hey, don't forget. Join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. And until then, remember this. Time spent in the Word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody.